सो हेलो एवरीवन एंड अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम बैक वंस अगेन टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ पीआईबी 247 इन टुडेस क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द पीआईबी न्यूज़ फ्रॉम 14th एंड 15th ऑफ डिसेंबर 2022 सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट्स बिगिन विद द सेशन एंड लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हिच सेज where was the first meeting of the development working group under india's g20 presidency was held so remember one thing that under g20 group there is a development working group right there is a development working group which works uh, towards the policy uh, policy formulation of the developing countries right jo developing countries hai unko policy formulation mein help karta hai this development working group so its first meeting and now as we all know since the g20 presidency for this year is with india so of course ye jo development working group ki meeting hui hogi wo india mein hi hogi and it was the very first development working group under the g20 presidency of india so the question is where did it take place so let's talk about this and then we will come back to the question so remember it took place in mumbai in maharashtra right mumbai as we all know is in maharashtra and this meeting took place to focus on g20 collective actions right to focus on g20 collective actions for accelerating progress in various areas like sdgs how we how we can achieve the targets of sdgs how we can provide support to the developing countries in dealing with the basic uh, issues right basic amenities like food fuel and fertilizer security right that was the objective of this meeting of development working group now remember talking about this uh, development working group so <clears throat> as i told you the objective of this group is to discuss the developmental issues in developing countries least developed countries and island countries right it was established in the year 2010 during the g20 toronto summit right 2010 mein toronto summit mein isko establish kiya gaya tha right it is a platform for g20 members to come together and discuss the major issues and to prioritize the multilateralism share solutions that promote growth and roadmap of the development plans and in 2016 remember one thing in 2016 it was entrusted with the responsibility of policy formulation in the g20 countries for what for achieving the sdgs right sdg ke jo targets hain usko achieve karne ke liye kya policy honi chahiye g20 countries mein uska jo zimmedari thi uski jo responsibility thi that was also entrusted to this development working group and it it was in the year 2016 all right so that is all about this group and now let's come back to the question the correct answer should be what option a mumbai because this meeting took place in mumbai moving ahead to question number 2 Where was the first finance and central bank deputies meeting was held to mark the start of discussion on the finance track agenda under the G20 presidency of India so like we have a development working group under G20 similarly we have a finance track agenda under G20 and under this finance track agenda the first finance and central bank deputies meeting uh, took place right so remember the meeting took place in bangalore right the meeting took place in bangalore and the objective was to discuss the uh, discuss the finance track agenda under the g2 in uh, india's presidency of g20 all right so let's talk about what is finance track agenda but before that remember this uh, meeting was organized jointly by the ministry of finance and reserve bank of india and during india's presidency uh, around 40 meetings will take place right 40 meeting hogi of this finance track agenda aur jisme फाइनेंस और इकोनॉमिक डिसीजन जो भी है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द जी ट्वेंटी कंट्रीज वो सारे डिसीजन लिए जाएंगे राइट right? कि क्या क्या चीजें इंप्रूव की जा सकती है इन द फाइनेंस एरिया एंड द इकोनॉमी एरिया राइट नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द फाइनेंस ट्रैक एजेंडा सो रिमेंबर इट इज लेड बाई दाइनेंस मिनिस्टर एंड सेंट्रल बैंक गवर्नर ऑफ जी ट्वेंटी कंट्रीज एंड एज आई टोल्ड यू इट फोकस ऑन इकोनॉमिक एंड फाइनेंशियल इशूज ऑफ द जी ट्वेंटी नेशन एंड द एरिया ऑफ डिस्कशन एंड और यू कैन सी द एरिया ऑफ फोकस इज आर दीज ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी ग्लोबल इकोनॉमिक आउटलुक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट एंड फाइनेंसिंग इंटरनेशनल फाइनेंसिंग आर्किटेक्चर सस्टेनेबल फाइनेंस ग्लोबल हेल्थ इंटरनेशनल टैक्सेशन फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर इश्यूज इंक्लूडिंग फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन सो दीज आर ऑल दी हॉट टॉपिक्स ऑफ टूडेज वर्ल्ड राइट तो ये सारे जितने भी फाइनेंशियल और इकोनॉमी से रिलेटेड जितने भी चीजें हैं ऑफ द जी ट्वेंटी कंट्रीज आर बींग डिस्कस्ड अंडर दिस फाइनेंस ट्रैक एजेंडा 
नाउ यू डोंट हैव टू रिमेंबर ऑल दीज एरिया ये सब याद रखने की जरूरत नहीं है जस्ट इट इज जस्ट फॉर द बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट वॉट आर दी एरिया ऑफ फोकस ऑफ दिस फाइनेंस ट्रैक एजेंडा और राइट so that is all and now let's come back to the question the question was regarding the location of this meeting so it take it took place in bangalore option e is the correct answer let's talk about question number 3 then department of agriculture and farmers welfare and department of space have signed an mou to develop which system using geospatial technologies for enhancing evidence based decision making capability of all the stakeholders in agriculture sector so an mou has been signed between department of agriculture and farmers welfare and department of space now the objective of this uh, mou was to develop a krishi decision support system krishi decision support system now what will this system do ye system kya karega so it will enhance the evidence based decision making of all the stakeholders which are working in the agriculture sector now what is the meaning of decision making capability here like for example is krishi decision support system se the stakeholders will have the information about the weather about when monsoon is coming so accordingly wo decision le payenge all right for example right now is decision support system mein uh, kya hoga this support system will use the resat 1a satellite and vedas of department of space what is vedas it is visualization of earth observation data and archival system there is no need to go into the details of veda just remember this krishi decision support system will use this satellite resat 1a and vedas of department of space and it will also be integrated with mosdac what is mosdac it is a data repository system of isro mosdac is the data repository of isro jahan pe bahut sara data pada hua hai and mosdac stands for meteorological and oceanographic satellite data archival center right and it will also be integrated with bhuvan geo platform of isro and other systems of icar right bhuvan ke through geo tagging hoti hai and uh, as we all know this and mosdac as i told you it is a data repository of isro dealing with meteorology oceanography and tropical water cycle so that the farmers or the other stakeholders will have the information regarding uh various variables like monsoon weather and other things so that they can take relevant decision at relevant time all right <clears throat> so that is all about this news and now let's come back to the question so which system they are uh, developing they are developing krishi decision support system option d is the correct answer all right moving ahead to question number 4 which is about uh aqua yeah, this fisheries and aquaculture infrastructure development fund right so the question is very basic what is the total size of this fund and remember this is not a new fund it was launched in the year 2018 19 it is in news because again a reply has been submitted by the ministry uh, in the parliament right so let's talk about this fund the objective of this fund are these theek hai ye basic objective hai and uske naam se hi clear hai fisheries and aquaculture development fund which means infrastructure in the fishery sector in the and in the aquaculture sector will be developed through this fund right now what type of infrastructure is this like pre harvest post harvest losses se bachane ke liye cold storage ke liye right marketing ke liye everything related to fisheries and aquaculture uh, the entire infrastructure will be developed under this fund so creation and modernization of capture and culture fisheries infrastructure Uh, creation of marine aquaculture infrastructure creation and modernization of inland fisheries infrastructure and reduce the post harvest losses by creating the post harvest infrastructure and improve domestic marketing facility through infrastructure so as i told you everything related to fisheries and aquaculture sector will be developed right it was launched in the year 2018 19 and the total fund size is this 7522.48 crores now since this is an important fund so you have to remember this amount 7522.48 crores now what happens under this fund is that government provides concessional finance to the eligible entities including states and uts and state entities and these uh, eligible entities uh, have the responsibility of developing the infrastructure state has the uh, you know central government under this fund provides concessional finance concessional finance ka matlab hota hai यू नो लोन एट वेरी लेस रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ठीक है उनको पैसा दिया जाता है दे डेवलप द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड द फाइनेंस इज प्रोवाइडेड थ्रू इंटरेस्ट सबवेंशन अप टू थ्री परसेंट 
how much interest subvention is provided up to 3% and the interest rate should not be more than 5% interest rate 5% uh, should not be lower than sorry interest rate not lower than 5% per annum 5% se kam to kya hi hoga kyunki 3% ka subvention government de hi rahi hai to 5% se kam ka interest pe nahi diya jayega all right so that is all about this fund and the correct answer is 7522.48 crores let's talk about question number 5 very very important question maan ke chalo ki aapke rbi grade b exam mein is news mein se question aana hi aana hai there is no doubt in this definitely uh, consider ki ek question leak ho gaya aapke exam ka right so ministry of health and family welfare headed by mansukh mandavia has organized the national maternal health workshop in new delhi during this uh, event or workshop states or uts were awarded for their efforts and achievements in maternal health so you have to identify the correct statement so various awards have been given to the states and uts for their uh, remarkable efforts in uh, the area of maternal health so let's talk about these awards kon kon se awards diye gaye hain aur kin kin ko diye gaye hain so for intensive efforts in reducing mmr uh the first prize was given to kerala followed by maharashtra right in isse zyada detail mein aapko janne ki zarurat nahi hai because this much was mentioned in pib and every newspaper jo hota hai wo pib se hi uthata hai and examiner bhi aapka is iske ye jo report hai iske detail mein nahi jayega right wo bhi pib ya newspaper se hi question uthane wala hai so this much is enough right iske piche bhi ek aur slide hai to jitna hum yahan pe padhenge that is enough theek hai more than enough so intensive efforts in reducing mmr number 1 was kerala number 2 was maharashtra and i hope you all know this abhi humne recently padha tha that mmr in india has been reduced to 97 and we have achieved the target of national health policy 2017 and we are on the track to achieve the uh, targets of sdg jo ki kitna hai 70 per lakh live births mmr ka all right antenatal care service the best antenatal antenatal care services uh are in madhya pradesh followed by rajasthan institutional delivery mein the best performing state was west bengal followed by uttar pradesh roll out of suman which is surakshit matritva aashwasan it is a scheme of ministry of health and family welfare right and in rolling out of suman among the last states it was punjab which was at number 1 and followed by tamil nadu and among the smallest state it was goa which was at number 1 followed by tripura okay talking about more awards so quality certification under laksha laksha is a scheme which provides uh, quality certifications to the institution uh, to the uh, institutions which uh, jahan pe institutional delivery hoti hai right so among bigger state it was karnataka among smaller state or uts it was chandigarh absolute number of certification sabse zyada kisko mile hain madhya pradesh and highest number of medical colleges which providing which are providing the services under laksha scheme is again madhya pradesh right high risk pregnancy management under pradhan mantri surakshit matritva aashwasan the best performing state was tamil nadu rapid roll out of pradhan mantri surakshit matritva aashwasan mein it was manipur which was the best performing in the best anm aasha teams auxiliary auxiliary nurse midwives and accredited social health activist anm aasha teams mein Uttar Pradesh was number one, and in midwifery initiative it was Telangana, which was given the best state award. All right, so that is all about the awards, and now let's come back to the question. Maharashtra bagged first position for intensive efforts in reducing MMR. No, it was not Maharashtra; it was Kerala. Tamil Nadu bagged second position in bigger state category for rollout of Suman. Sahi baat hai. Chandigarh. uh bag first position in small state or ut category for quality certification under lakshya program yes this is correct and lakshya program remember guys it is again a scheme of the ministry of health and family welfare for promotion of institutional delivery for creation of better infrastructure so that we can uh, uh, so that the mothers can go for would be mothers can be, can go for institutional deliveries rather than delivery at home right Manipur won first prize for rapid roll out of extended Pradhan Mantri Surakshit Matritva Abhiyan correct and Telangana was awarded best performing state for midwifery initiative so except one all are correct which means 2 3 4 and 5 is the correct answer option C I hope this question is clear aur pakka aayega exam mein yaad rakhna and now let's talk about questions in short but 
उससे पहले मैं बता दू इफ यू वॉन्ट टू हैव द पी डी एफ ऑफ दिस सेशन यू कैन ज्वाइन द टेलीग्राम चैनल द लिंक इज प्रोवाइडेड इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू आस्क एनीथिंग रिलेटेड टू एग्जामिनेशन यू कैन आस्क हेयर राइट एंड लेट्स टॉक अबाउट क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स The CBIC has recently celebrated the completion of 60 years of enactment of Customs Act of 1962. On this occasion, a mascot for India Customs was released. What is the name of this mascot? Such questions are also asked in the examination, and that is why I have taken this question. The name of this mascot is uh, Officer Hans, and this is the mascot you can see here, right? Officer Hans. Hans is uh, blue swan. So option B is the correct answer. The Ayush Grid project was conceptualized by Ministry of Ayush, headed by Sarbanand Sonowal, right? For creating a comprehensive information technology backbone for entire Ayush sector, it envisages the digitization of service delivery across the six functional areas. Which of the following are amongst the six functional areas? So remember, the six functional areas under Ayush Grid project are health services, drug administration, medicinal plants, education, research. All five are the uh, are amongst the six functional areas, and sixth one is capacity building and outreach. Sixth one is what capacity building and outreach of Ayush services. All right, so therefore the correct answer will be option E. All of the above, सारे ही हैं ये among the six functional areas. Question number eight पे आ जाते हैं. दीन दयाल उपाध्याय ग्राम ज्योति योजना डी डी यू जी जे वाई वॉज लॉन्च बाय द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पावर हेडेड बाय करेंटली हेडेड बाय आर के सिंह राजकुमार सिंह इन डिसंबर 2014 फॉर रूरल इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन वर्क अक्रॉस द कंट्री व्हेन वॉज इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन ऑफ ऑल विलेजेस एंड ऑल विलिंग हाउस होल्ड वॉज कम्प्लीटेड अंडर इट एज रिपोर्टेड बाय ऑल द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट तो ये थोड़ा सा अलग क्वेश्चन है इसमें यह नहीं पूछा गया है कि वेन वॉज द स्कीम लॉन्च या विच इज द नोडल मिनिस्ट्री या वट आर दार्गेट उसमें यह पूछा गया है कि When was the targets achieved? So it was 31st March 2019 when all the targets were achieved under Din Dayal Jyoti Gram uh, Din Dayal Upadhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana. All right, option B is the correct answer. What is the percentage of rural workers, including small and marginal farmers, engaged in agriculture sector of the country, according to PLFS 2020-2021, conducted by MOSPI, which is Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation? so what is the percentage of rural workers including small and marginal farmers who are engaged in agriculture sector it is 60.8% option c is the correct answer and very very important question it is also an important question guys do remember this percentage what is india's contribution to global production for pulses in the year 2019 as per the agricultural statistics at a glance 2021 again an important question So India's contribution to global production of pulses in the year 2019 was 25.44 percent. Option D is the correct answer. Question number 11 पे आ जाते हैं. Agriculture and agricultural marketing is a state subject as we all know. और इसीलिए बहुत सारे लफड़े भी हुए थे जब वो किसान बिल आया था, जो farm bills आए थे. Even though central government has made a provision for contract farming in the model acts circulated to the states for their adoption. How many states have provisioned contract farming in their APMC Act, State AP, APMC Act, as per the central government's Model APMC Act of 2003, right? जो central government का Model APMC Act था उसके हिसाब से कितने states ने अपने State APMC Act में provisions को include किया है? So the number of states are is 15. Option B is the correct answer, and you don't have to remember the name of all the states. That is not required at all. Okay? Question number twelve: Which organization has developed a specific module on emotional well-being and mental health under the ages of school health program under Aishman Bharat? Very straightforward question, which uh, does not need any explanation. It is NCERT, which is National Council of Educational Research and Training. Option C is the correct answer. Moving ahead to the Fame India scheme under phase two of Fame India scheme. Rupees thousand crore has been allotted allocated for the development of charging infrastructure. Under it, the Ministry of Heavy Industries has sanctioned this much electric vehicle charging stations in how many cities across 25 states or UTs? So, uh, 2,877 electric vehicle charging electric vehicle charging stations will be installed in 
68 cities across 25 states or UTs and therefore the correct answer is option D. And the last question for today, which is a very important question, which web portal and mobile app has been launched by Bureau of Energy Efficiency to facilitate e-vehicle navigation and promote e-mobility in the country, right? E-mobility ko promote karne ke liye aur e-vehicle navigation ko promote karne ke liye a portal has been launched by Bureau of Energy Efficiency and this portal is known as EV Yatra option B is the correct answer. All right, so that's it for today's session. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, take care and God bless.